Hey there friends, I'm Frugal Green Girl and today I want to share with you my recipe for making homemade elderberry syrup. Elderberries are a common herbal remedy that people have been using, you know, according to the research I've done for centuries to help treat conditions and things. Um, today the, they're not really studied all that extensively. They have been studied but not really by the big firms and in my opinion that's probably because it, it, uh, uh, elderberries aren't necessarily patentable like their drugs that the pharmaceutical companies are able to make and so for that reason it really doesn't help their bottom line to find that there are herbal remedies that are just as helpful as these pharmaceutical drugs that they're able to come out with because then of course people are going to choose those instead a because they're cheaper b because they're more healthy you know, and even more readily available, and see because we can make them ourselves. So there's really no benefit to them to study them to find out how well they work because then they don't, you know, make as much money from the people not buying their drugs. So anyway, um, that's just my opinion on it. I think um, there's probably been, you know, there is a lot of research that's been done. I wish there was more, um, so I'll just leave it up to you to decide. Um, but some of the things that elderberry has been used for because it's really anti-inflammatory, it's antiviral, and it has anti-cancer properties. Um, it's high in flavonoids and antioxidants, and it's used to help treat things like the colds and the flu. Both of those are um, viruses that cause that, so they're not only, you know, um, elderberry syrup is not only used to help prevent it if you just take it on a daily basis, but it's also helped, it's used to help treat it once it, you know, starts to happen, or you, you know, you realize that you have a cold or a flu. Um, elderberries are also known for helping to boost the immune system again so they help prevent things from you know um, coming on in the first place um, they're anti-inflammatory and so they help with things like sinus pain and congestion um, it's used for leg and back pain nerve pain um, and some people even use it for things like hay fever cancer HIV and AIDS or chronic fatigue syndrome things like that so personally I like it just because of its high antioxidants and things like that you know it you know uh, says it can help prevent cancer which is always a good thing that's a really common thing there's pretty much nobody that doesn't know or have some sort of a relative or a friend that has had or has now cancer so it's so common I think it's really important for us to do everything we can to help prevent it but also just colds and flus I just got this bag here um, back in fall and I've been bought you know making my own elderberry syrup and you know I've been trying to make sure we drink it every day all of the people in my family we all try and have some every day to help prevent again those colds and flus and things like that and other viruses you know there's all these different things out there that are scaring people Ebola and all this other stuff so having something that can help prevent viral infections is definitely beneficial and there's even people you know on the internet that I have read who have you know reviewed um, elderberry syrups that they take you know every day one user said that she used it every day for 10 years and she hasn't gotten a single cold or flu that whole time. Now that's not me, that's just somebody else that I have found that said that, but I don't know. I guess we could see. We could see. It's certainly worth a try and if you have a cold or a flu and you've already made the elderberry, you know, it might help shorten the duration or again if you just take it every day it might help prevent it from happening in the first place. So what sets my recipe apart from most of the others available is that I use a lower sugar approach. Sugar is an immune suppressant, so it doesn't really make sense to me to try to drink something every day that has high amounts of sugar that's going to help suppress my immune system. I want the elderberry syrup to help boost my immune system, not to counteract it. So my recipe uses high amounts of um, elderberries and lower amounts of sugar, so it won't be as sweet as some of the recipes that are out there or the commercial, you know, versions. I'd rather not say their names because I don't want to get, you know suit or anything for copying their stuff but it uses a really similar recipe to those commercially available versions that are actually really expensive so it'd be a lot cheaper to buy them on your own and then make it yourself you can also control the amounts of ingredients that you're putting in it you know um, even flavor it differently if you want to mix it up so it's not always the same and um, you know still get that antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties and things like that without having to have as much sugar. So I'm really excited to share my recipe with you. It is super simple and easy to make. It takes just five ingredients plus water and it's really again really easy to make. It takes no time at all hardly and it's you know I've been enjoying it. We think it tastes really good. Everybody in my family really enjoys it 
and you know we've been drinking this every day since earlier in the fall um, when I first you know got my new pot package of it here and we haven't gotten sick once yet so thankfully maybe it's helping I don't know I think so um, and I know last time I did get a cold or I felt like I was starting to get a cold I started drinking it right away and who knows maybe it helped shorten it because it seemed like in just a few hours the congestion that I was feeling and you know the sneezing and things that I was doing that made me think that I was getting a cold ended I mean literally four hours later and it was totally gone so um, I hope you try it homemade um, medicines you know can be really beneficial again so I really do hope you try it I really enjoy this recipe and I um, know your family will enjoy it too. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are about ready to make our elderberry syrup and I've already added most of the ingredients to the pot, all the things we just talked about. So we have our elderberries, measured that out, one cinnamon stick, so that's in the pot, three cloves, actually I like four, but you can use either three or four depending on what it is you want. The honey is the last thing in the recipe and you don't want to add that yet. Um, fresh ginger, I just grated that up or minced it up and put it in there. And so with those four ingredients, excuse me, five, um, with the water, these four ingredients plus the water, that makes five, we just stick this on the stove and we're going to bring it up to a low boil and then we're going to turn it to low and then simmer it for 30 minutes. So I'll go ahead and get this on my stove and we'll get it simmering. Okay, so this has just started to boil, and as you can see when you first get it started out, the berries definitely still look pretty hard, and um, the liquid isn't very dark. But as you get to boiling this, I just turned it down to low. This is too high. You want to simmer it nice and low, because um, otherwise too much liquid will evaporate out. But once you simmer it for the 30 minutes, um, the berries will be nice and plump. I'll show you what that looks like here. Okay, so the 30 minutes has gone by, and we are finished with this. The liquid, of course, is much darker color now. The berries have swollen up because of all of the liquid, and the cinnamon stick has gotten all big and wide. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to move this off of the heat, um, and then let it cool down for a few minutes, and then we'll go ahead and strain it. Okay, so it's cooled down some, and it's ready to strain. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is take it and put it in French press. Now, this is just the op, you know, the way that I do it. You would probably have <clears throat> different ways of doing it that would probably work even better than this, but this is just what I do because this is what I have. So, I just pour the whole mixture in there. I'm going to scoop all these berries in here when I have two hands to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this thing. I removed the top from it because otherwise it doesn't push down all the way. And then I'm going to stick it in here and kind of smash the berries down and then pour the juice out. It works really well for me. So um, after I get it all strained and everything, I'm going to go ahead and put it right back in the pot so that I can mix in the honey. It's actually better not to wait until it's totally cooled down so that whatever sweetener you're using can have a chance to dissolve. Okay, so here it is. I went ahead and squeezed the heck out of that and made it as dry as possible. And this makes good chicken food if you have chickens. So I'll give that to them. And then, of course, the very last step. See how easy this was? All we have to do is add the honey and stir it in and then put it in your container of choice. Such an easy, easy thing to do. And it'll keep in the fridge for up to three months. So <clears throat> definitely recommend it. Okay, and there we have the final product. Pour it into your container of choice and enjoy. Make sure you keep it refrigerated, though. Thanks for watching, my frugal green girl. We'll see you next time.